Tax Solutions Now is a complimentary referral service that connects callers to companies that provide tax services. Money matters. If you owe thousands in back taxes to the IRS, how much can Tax Solutions Now save you? I pay less than I owe. That's right. Money matters. So call Tax Solutions Now and get the IRS off your back. Since 2014, Tax Solutions Now has been a leader in the tax resolution industry. Remove wage garnishments, property liens, fines, and penalties. Qualify for the Fresh Start program or even uncollectible status. How much can Tax Solutions Now save you? I owed the IRS over $10,000. I paid a fraction of what I owed. Call now to reduce or even eliminate your back taxes. I called Tax Solutions Now and got the IRS off my back. Thanks. You saved us a ton of money. Money matters. How much can Tax Solutions Now save you. Call now and find out. Call 800-683-7377. The Turnpike Sports Book Report. The Turnpike Sports Book Report is brought to you by BorgataSports.com. Your favorite casino is now your favorite sports book available anywhere in New Jersey. BorgataSports.com. Sign up at BorgataSports.com using our promo code PIKE, that's P-I-K-E, and you get a risk-free bet up to $300 and 20 bonus dollars at BorgataCasino.com. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, welcome to another edition of the Turnpike Sports Book Report. We've got a bunch of stories to talk about. We've got our usual suspects of sports betting revenue and handle numbers to report. We've got a mobile milestone to talk about. For Ooh, a mobile the milestone. Uh, we have a bunch of la- launches and deals to discuss. We even have an update on the Tennessee Action 24-7 saga going on in the court system. Which, by of, the way, is, ten- is, of Tennessee. is changing daily. So, uh, news, Again, this may be old by the yeah, time this News airs. is coming out daily on this uh, situation. So, uh, And uh, it's kind of an interesting thing to watch, especially uh, for the industry as a whole, because we're starting to see exactly how independent sports books can operate, maybe compete you know, in, in the industry against the biggies. And it's, it's it kind of... It's kinda, setting new ground as it goes along each and every day. Sure. Let's start with some sports betting numbers. We have Nevada reporting their February numbers. They had a handle of $553.8 million, which is 14% down from January, and it's the lowest since the full sports schedule returned following COVID. Well, you know, there are less things to bet on. There's no more football. Yeah, so that, uh, that well, kind of that that hurts, you know. I think the Super Bowl hurt it. A lot too, you know. A, well, lot, of, super, a lot of states were hurt by the Super Bowl. I think well, a lot of people went with the Brady thing. Yeah, well, especially New England, the New England yeah. sports books. And so we'll talk I, about I, New Hampshire yeah, a little wanna, bit. I don't want to. No, it's okay. Screw up the uh, <laughs> flow here, but you know. But, but look, uh, the Super Bowl was what February third, yeah. February second, February third, and, and you know and everybody put their bets in in January. And after that, you know. Certainly you have NBA, you have NHL, and certainly there are people bet on those and people make money on those. And But, you know, it's not like football. Football is like the king when it comes to betting. Well, if you think about the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl is a very unique event, especially in terms of betting, because a lot of the betting occurs the month before. Yeah. Because of all the prop bets, you know, of a lot well, of other look, things. Everyone, look, the numbers aren't out, but everyone's going to bounce back in March because of March Madness. So you would hope. Y- you I, would hope. I would think. I would certainly, from, from all accounts and all news stories, I'm seeing that, you know, there should be a bump from the uh, March Madness. March Madness should have almost the same effect, if sure. not a greater effect, than the Super Bowl sure, did. Sure. But the Super Bowl is unique in that the effects of that game is not going to be felt in the same month the betting is done. You know, if you think about it, most of the betting is done in January. The results happen and are reported for the February numbers, not the January. Yeah, numbers. you have that two week before the Super Bowl right. that everyone throws their bets down on. Yeah, so and that usually happens in January. Exactly, so. and uh, again, it affects every every state's numbers in terms of revenue more so than handle. If you know, it's it's kind of, like I said, it's a weird situation with that one sporting event. Uh, mobile handle in Nevada for February was three hundred sixteen point three million. That was about 57% of the overall amount, which I still find interesting that Nevada still does not have a dominant mobile industry. For yeah, I know. Betting. In New Jersey, it's 90 and over, 90% and over. It's always 90% and over. It's always 90% and over. Same thing with Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania's getting up there. Tennessee's 100% mobile. 
Well, New, look, New Jersey is an interesting state because we have our sports books in two extreme areas of the state. We have in the north, we have uh, you know Monmouth and we have uh, Meadowlands, and then way down in the south, we have Atlantic City, and yeah. a lot of people are in the middle. <laughs> so you know, it, I'm right in the middle, and I have an hour drive to Atlantic City or an hour drive to uh, Meadowlands. So, and, and I have to admit, know. for the people in Central Jersey. It's so much easier to use your phone than yeah. go over the Delaware to to one of the Philadelphia casinos. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm closest to parks. We got live. We got we're very close to Philadelphia. And so. but again, but we live of, in New Jersey. A lot of people so. don't want to get off their couches either. No, no. And, and and like I said, even when I'm at a sports book, I still bet on my phone. Yeah. You know why get up off your chair and go stand in line? It, so. it, or at a kiosk. Yeah, yeah. And actually, I've seen lines at kiosks now too. Sure. So. Uh, but again, it's a, it's a matter of convenience for the mobile stuff. And again, I don't know why. I, I guess maybe the population centers are where the casinos are anyway, so they go out and do it. Yeah. You know, especially in the winter time, they're not affected as the, by the cold and the snow and yeah. the sleet like the eastern states are. Uh, but again, mobile handle was fifty seven percent of the overall handle, and that's where the milestone comes in, uh, according to uh, Chris Altruda, which uh, we ha- we have on the show this week. Uh, the um, the state has cleared the three billion dollar mark for mobile handle since the gaming control board in Nevada has begun reporting that number, wow. which has been January twenty twenty. So from January of twenty twenty to to the current year, current month, they've cleared the three billion dollar mark in mobile handle. Wow. Okay. Uh, February taxes to the state was two point five two point one five million. Now you hinted at it before, New Hampshire. They were affected big time by the Super Bowl. Everyone bet on Brady in New England. Yep. So uh, yeah. they they had an increase of Super Bowl betting by five million dollars year over year between last year's and this year's. Uh, lottery paid out eight point eight million on the Super Bowl for a net loss of one point seven million for the state. Mm-hmm. Uh, the handle overall reported a just under fifty one million dollar total handle. Just under forty-three million of that was from mobile. Uh, the revenue they had a revenue of one point seven nine million. Most of that came from mobile as well. One point seven two million was uh, revenue from mobile uh, sports betting. Taxes came in at seven hundred sixty-nine thousand dollars. That's a fifty-nine percent drop. Fifty-nine percent drop from January. So uh, that is uh, kind of they had a record month last month anyway regarding the uh in january i should say not february but mm-hmm. january they had a record month because of the super bowl yeah yeah absolutely super no. bowl gave super bowl took i hey up in new england they're still talking about tom brady so uh he's in the news he's on everyone's mind and if you get a chance to bet on him in new england i guess they're going to bet on him and it was interesting to see tampa bay resign the entire team yeah pretty much it the entire team is back together pretty so much it. uh and it but i haven't seen the latest numbers but I don't believe Tampa Bay is the favorite to win. I don't know. I, I would I, I would think the Chiefs are Kansas City. They still you know, are, yeah. I, I think probably still are. And I don't think that's going to change. Anymore. No, especially if Mahomes gets to the Super Bowl healthy again. He had that foot problem, which kind of sure. really hampered him. But, again, it was a good game if you're a Brady fan. Uh, West Virginia reported their numbers, $38 million in total handle. That was a decrease of more than $12 million compared to January. Again, West Virginia reports their numbers differently than everybody else. They do it weekly instead of monthly, so you just gotta pick and choose and take <laughs> a, take into effect yeah. what um, what they have reported here. Uh, West Virginia sports books earned just one point three million dollars in revenue compared to four million dollars the previous month, the previous four weeks, I should say. Uh, Greenbrier was first in revenue with one point two million for the month. Hollywood came in second with 400000 in revenue. DraftKings uh, came in uh, with 65000 of Hollywood's 400000 in revenue, which was kind of weird. That was only 65000 in revenue. And Mountaineer had an interesting report. They brought in through $230,000 retail revenue and only a few thousand in online revenue. William Hill. Their partner for the mobile reported a negative two hundred and thirty seven thousand in revenue. Wow. Okay. So kind of an interesting month for William Hill uh, down in West Virginia. 
Let's talk about a couple launches that happened around the country before we start talking about the Tennessee action stuff. Um, New Jersey, Golden Nugget Online Gaming has basically relaunched their sports betting platform. They have a deal with Scientific Games. They are now the platform operator of choice with Golden Nugget, and they're going to be starting to do that around the country as well. Their Golden Nuggets in Michigan with Scientific Games. Uh, most of the time you're going to see Golden Nugget paired with Scientific Games. They had a different partner before this, but they've relaunched everything. It's shared wallet, that sort of mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, Indiana, Penn National received their sports betting license on March 3rd. That means Barstool Sports is going to launch pretty soon there as well. WinBet received its go-live notice on the same day, March 23rd. I found this kind of interesting in the reports. Bally's. The acquisition, the license acquisition of Fantasy Draft in that state was approved, and we're going to see Bally's operating a fantasy sports site. That should be interesting in Indiana. Yeah. So uh, Bally's is buying everything; they're yeah. acquiring everything. They're they're on, they're on a shopping spree. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, interesting things in Indiana: we have a new local betting show launching in Indiana. Great! All Indiana Bets is going to be airing on WISH TV beginning in august it's basically a uh uh betting show that you know they're going to talk about the indiana teams only oh okay all yeah. right so it's not across it's the not, board it's there. not okay. a national right. show it's going to be indiana focus they're going to have live broadcasts they're going to have online broadcasts and they're going to do it as a podcast as well so it's going to be Great. multi-tier uh virginia gambling.com group uh got its sports betting affiliate uh license for virginia's betters Virginia is for betters. You know, that old, what was yeah. their old slogan? Virginia, Virginia is, for, is love. for lovers. Yeah. yeah. So they do Virginia is for betters. Um, internationally, we had Bet Construct, Bet Construct, I'm saying this wrong, Bet Construct launch a virtual in play tennis suite of games for tennis, huh? Yeah, for right. uh, their uh, overseas uh, betters. Or they don't have it in the United States yet. But uh, it's a whole in-play tennis suite of games where you're going to be able to use data from uh, tennis matches going on to create virtual sports. And people can bet on that as it goes along. Uh, Let's go over into the deal section. Oh, by the way, for those of you wondering, Connecticut is inching closer and closer to sports betting. They've got both tribes on board. But yeah, both Native compacts. American yes. uh, tri- when you uh, for Connecticut, there's only Native American casinos, right? So there's no state-run casinos. So there's well, different legislative things you have to do in Connecticut. Well, the yeah, they have to get the compacts all straightened up between the Native American tribes in the state. Then the state has to go forward with the enabling legislation and the uh, the structure on how to do it. So we'll see where that goes to. Uh, one interesting little note I saw in terms of legislation here the uh, u.s congress recently had their annual members day hearing and that's held each year for house members to just air whatever uh, topics they want to do for their constituency base Mm -hmm. and one of the topics brought out was brought up by the nevada one of the nevada house members Um, let me get this right here representative dina titus democrat from nevada uh, made a presentation to eliminate the 0.25% tax on handle, sports betting handle hmm. in the United States. Uh, this has been part of the Revenue Act of 1951. And basically, uh, the federal government gets 0.25% of the state's sports betting handle every year, every tax year. Uh, just to give you an example of what is going on here, uh, three states. New Jersey, Nevada, and Pennsylvania owe the IRS a combined $34.6 million from this tax. Okay. Wow. I didn't know that. So uh, she has been, you know, every time this uh, Member's Day happens, that's one of her presentations to get rid of this excise tax from the federal uh, 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 law there. Let's see what happens. Uh, going over onto the deal side of things, we have Points Bet and Penn National doing a, a an agreement for twenty year access uh, market access for Mississippi and Pennsylvania. And now this is for sports betting and i gaming. So we may see a Points Bet casino coming soon. Interesting, good. Uh, so I like Points Bet. No, Points Bet's fun. It, it's also laid out well. I, I think I said this in the 
uh, last episode, the color scheme okay, is easy scheme. on my eyes anyway. Well, just their layout and the number, you know, you can follow the numbers easy for me. Well, this deal would give points bet access to 14 states in the, in the United States of America. Hmm. Um, moving over to BetMGM, they have been granted access to IMG Arena's Golf Event Center, which will increase the, um, I don't, I don't want to say the applicability, but um, the offerings that BetMGM can do for their golf products in terms of sports betting. Uh, you're going to be able to stream action from two different par three holes each tournament via the BetMGM app, too. Great. Uh, moving over to Sport Radar, they have done a couple deals. They did a uh, data and video analytics deal with Synergy Sports, uh, which uh, will increase their video and OTT offerings that sportsbooks can use through their apps as well. And they did a deal with the Chinese Basketball Association where they are going to be able to distribute regular season, postseason games, and all-star games to broadcasters, streamers, OTT broadcasters, and sports books for the Chinese Basketball Association League. Great. Now let's do our little quick update on the Tennessee action uh, situation down in Tennessee. And I am sure by the time this airs, this will be stale information. Something else will happen. Yeah. Because but, it's a fluid situation. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Just to refresh everyone's memory, I'm pretty sure everyone has been following this. Tennessee Action 24-7's license was suspended by the Tennessee Education Lottery because of alleged credit card fraud, money laundering, data breaches, uh, pro illegal proxy betting, all allegations. And the Tennessee Action 24-7 sportsbook had its license suspended the site was shut down especially at march madness which was a horrible time for that to happen yep, yep. Uh, they lost out on a chunk of change there we'll see what happens though uh, tennessee action 24 7 sued in court uh, to get a temporary injunction to reinstate their license while the tennessee education lottery investigates these claims of money laundering fraud proxy betting that sort of stuff uh, the court sided with Tennessee Action 24-7 for the temporary injunction. The license is no longer suspended. They're actively taking bets. But the investigation by the lottery is still going on into these uh, the, the allegations of fraud and credit card fraud, ID theft. And uh, we'll see exactly where the uh, investigation goes. There's still a chance to get suspended, but... Uh, right now, for now, the Tennessee Action 24-7 guys are back in business. All right. Good news for Tennessee Action 24-7. And that'll do it for us this week. We'll see you next time on the Turnpike.